Glory be to the name of our Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit yesterday, today, and forevermore. I greet and welcome to you all through this evening service. May the name of our Lord be glorified. We are going to begin a new series on cults who are distorting God's truth. This is a this is not a sermon, but this is, a, this is a study series. The first talk is an introduction to cults. Who are cults? How can we identify cults? What are the elements which define cults? Whenever people hear the word cult, they often think of a group that worships Satan, is sacrifices animals, take part in evil, bizarre activities and paganistic rituals. So, but that is not really the case. A cult rarely involves all these things, but if we put in a broader sense, cult is a religious system. The word cult means it is a system, religious system, with particular rites and customs. This is, a bro this is in a broadest sense. To irreligious people, every religion is a cult. To people, those who were vehemently against the Christian faith, the Christian faith is cultic. But with regard to Christianity, when we narrow down cult, with regard to Christianity, cult is an unorthodox sect whose members distort the original doctrines of the religion, particularly here, Christianity. In our context, that is in the Christian context, Cult is a religious group that denies one or more of the fundamentals of biblical truth. Cult is a moment which denies one or more of the fundamentals of Christian truth. For example, the deity of Jesus Christ. Jesus is truly God. If a person or a moment denies this truth and claims to be Christian. They are cultic. They are cults. If a person or a moment denies the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, even though they claim themselves as Christians, they are cults. A cult is a group that teaches doctrines if believed will cause a person to remain unsaved. It claims to be a part of a religion, yet it denies essential truths of that religion. In every religion, there are cultic movements. In the broadest sense, a cult claims to be a part of a religion, yet it denies essential truths of the religion. It claims to be a part of that religion, but it denies established facts and doctrines and dogmas of that particular religion. So, in Christianity, cult is a moment which denies one, of the more, one or more of the fundamental truths of Christianity while still claiming to be Christian. One or more fundamental truths. Well, for the last couple of weeks, we have went through an overview on Christian doctrines. We have segregated that into various categories, Christian doctrine into various categories. Some are deemed to be very essential and fundamental to the Christian faith. And some doctrines were not fundamental or foundation to Christian faith. So, a cult is a moment which denies the fundamental truths of Christianity. Particularly, salvation is by faith in Christ alone, grace alone in Christ alone, by faith alone. The cults will not allow that alone instrument. There are many cultic moments 
who claims them themselves as Christians but deny the essential established biblical truths, particularly Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Sabbatarians, Worldwide Church of God, Binatarians, Non-Trinitarians, particularly Jehovah's Witnesses is the most famous movement which claims to be a Christian movement but essentially it is not. In the coming weeks we shall go through a survey on the doctrines of Jehovah's Witnesses, his history, his practices and its failed predictions and all of its unbiblical truths and we shall refute those unbiblical elements. The word cult is derived from the Latin word cultus that means adoration or to care. Our English words cultivate and culture derived from such words. In older English this cult means worship. Our new English defines cult as an unorthodox religious group. So if you study old English particularly the, uh, the English of the Middle Ages, if you see a word cult, it means worship. You are familiar with that, I believe. Over the course of time, the meaning of particular words, particularly in the English language, its meanings have changed. So in our new English, the word cult means unorthodox religious groups. So cult is distinct from religion and is also distinct from religious sects, sects, S-E-C-T-S. A sect is a part of a religion. In Christianity, sect is synonymous with a denomination. Denominations is the result of various ways of interpreting the Bible with regard to various elements in ecclesiology, church government, but uh, in a true a Bible, in Christian denomination, the, all the essential teachings are similar. There are many denominations in Christianity, but they all share the same fundamental faith. Every denomination believes that Jesus is God and human. Every denomination believes is that Jesus rose again physically on the third day. Every denomination, Christian denomination, believes that man is essentially a sinner. A cult is a moment that deviates from those, these essential elements, fundamental elements to the Christian faith. So, there are many scriptures that want believers to be aware of the unbiblical and cultic elements which prevail in midst of us. There are many examples found in both in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, particularly the familiar verse from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20 to 22. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou shalt say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? Even a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Verse 20 says, as presumed to speak a word in my name which I, even, I, I have not commanded him to speak. So, a cult is a person who takes authority by himself and is teaching things which are not commanded in scripture. Fundamental distortion of fundamental truths. When you arrive to the New Testament, there are many warnings against false and cultic teachings. 2 Timothy, many warnings were given in 2 Timothy, particularly starting from 2nd chapter, 2 Timothy is 2nd chapter and verses 17 to 21, 
and their word will eat us death the canker of whom is Himanais and Philetus who concerning the truth are erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. This is cultic. They claim that the resurrection has happened already. There is no future resurrection. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. So who is a cult who is attempting to shake the foundational truths of the Bible? Verse 23 to 26, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strives and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men, have to teach, patient, and it goes on. And in e, uh, chapter 3 also he continues, verse 1 to 9, he speaks of false teachers. Men shall be lovers of many characteristics are given concerning false teachers, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Verse 13, But evil men seduces shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So, throughout the Bible, lot of exhortation is given to us against cultic moments who deny the essentials of faith. So, where do these cultic theology or moments or person denies and distorts the biblical truths. First, they distort truths about God. God is personal being, is infinity, is eternality, is singularity, is immutability, is supernaturality, is sovereignty, is transcendence, is immanence, is goodness, is triunity. They twist the truths concerning God. And also they twist the truths concerning Jesus Christ, his deity, his pre-existence, his humanity, his historical work, his virgin conception, he is that he is the universal savior, his resurrection, his present manifestation and work. Cults distort or deny one or multiple elements concerning Christ. With regard to the God, the Holy Spirit, cults deny or refute, distort the truths concerning his divinity, his personality, and his work. Major cults deny the personhood of Holy Spirit, deity of Holy Spirit, and the work of the Holy Spirit. With regard to man, man's dependence, man's mortality, man's sinfulness, man's constitution of spirit, soul, and body. Cults distort the truths. With regard to sin, cults distort truths concerning sin. They distort the established truth that sin is transgressing against God and his character. And sin leads to death and judgment. And the effects of sin is continuing to be manifested in the lives of Christians. So cults deny or distort these truths. For example, how can cults distort the continu continuing manifestation of sin in Christian lives? Some cults take one of two extremes. Some cults take the extreme of perfectionism, that they believe that everyone within in their moment are perfect. They are perfect in everything. They are completely without any spot of sin. And there are some cultic teachings which deny the need for a person to be sanctified. They believe that you can remain and enjoy as much as sin you could. So, with regard to the sin, cults deny or overemphasize or little emphasize these truths. Salvation. Cults distort those truths. As necessitated by sin, they deny that salvation is initiated by the grace of God and they deny that salvation is available to all by the death and resurrection of Jesus and they deny that it is received by faith alone, in Christ alone, by grace alone, apart from any human works because every cult requires some kind of effort in in part with their cultic moment to a person to be saved. 
every cultic movement teaches that if you want to be said you would you should stick in our moment you should stick with our dogma then only you could attain salvation and also they deny the truths about the church they believe that they are the only remnant of god in the world every cultic movement teaches that every cultic movement teach that that they are the only true church of god every other christian denomination or movement or a pastor or a preacher or a church every other others who claim themselves to be christians and churches are doomed to hell they only attain heaven so they distort the truths concerning church and they also distort the truths concerning the second coming of christ they reserve see on to their followers only the members of our moment or our so called church will attain heaven will inherit see on will inherit new jerusalem will inherit uh, will receive a glorious body and others will be put to shame and they distort truths concerning the bible they deny the bible as the complete final authority to inspired providentially preserved and properly interpreted so every cultic woman you, you cannot see every cultic woman deny all these truths one or more of these truths is denied in cultic movements so this is their theology then moving on to their tactics or methods how can we identify someone as a cult first i have spoken to you concerning the doctrine how cults deviate from doctrinal truths the major elements of cults what are the major elements what is a if you ask what is a cult i first defined what is a cult and uh, provide some biblical examples for us to be exhorted against cults and i then spoke to you concerning the major doctrines which cults deny or distort and then if you are to ask a question what is a cult cult is a group a person or a group that infuses or gives new teaching they always say that we have received new only we are giving this teaching in the whole world for the past this century or the past centuries no one has preached the truth we are the only pillars of truth new theology and doctrine and then they first say they have the new teaching then they say they have the only true teaching they often considers other denominations or other christians to be apostate and they claim that they alone possess the complete truth and they have a strong leadership a cult often it starts from a person who builds then builds an empire of an individual a small or large but powerful leadership group holds control of the group's teachings and practices and then they offer they often request tithing and property transfer to the religious system as a requirement they focuses on developing assets building many projects and they often require much tithe and offering from their adherents isol isolationist to facilitate facilitate control over the members physically intellectually financially and emotionally they isolate cult is a group which isolates people from their families from their local churches they isolate physically intellectually financially and emotionally so that they can infuse their unbiblical and distorted teachings controlling if a moment you or your neighbor or a relative is associated with is being controlled by a moment that is a cultic moment 
so we are a local church we should not control a person we are to teach the truth we are to guide the truth but we should not force a person the free will that god had given to every individual is to be maintained that is to be honored so cults can exercise control over their members by through fear and also by threatening loss of salvation if they leave the group they teach that if you leave our church our congregation you would lose loss salvation you would end up in hell so they threaten and they exercise control indoctrination they possess methods in for reinforce concern cults beliefs and standards where opposing views are ridiculed and often misinterpreted they reinforce cultic beliefs and standards and opposing views were made a mockery then apocalyptic they always provide apocalyptic teachings to give members a future focus and philosophical purpose in avoiding the apocalypse or being delivered through it every major cult has an apocalyptic element jesus would return in such and such a day jesus is preparing such and such a place only for those members of our organization of our institution of our church the you will receive the eternal privileges and also cults focus upon experience yes our christian life should have experience but they practice various things including meditation repetition of words or phrases and spiritual enlightenment with god are used as a confirmation of the truth i saw a vision i saw god so they claim some extraordinary some claims to back up their claims they also use deprivation they use sleep and food deprivation which we can civil of the subject recently you heard many died as a result of a false teacher teaching his congregation to avoid food and go on full fasting without having any food so this is a cult fasting is a biblical doctrine but in the new testament it is not forced upon a person it does not command you shall fast for 40 days freedom is given to every individual if a person feels or feels that he needs to fast for a particular situation or a scenario he needs to fast so there are some criteria but cults deprive their subjects deprive of sleep and deprive of food when the participants or the members of cults are being are receiving some kind of backlash from the community they say that that you are persecuted for the sake of god that you are persecuted for the sake of the gospel and they motivate people so cult is a group that is unorthodox esoteric devotion to a person subject or a set of new ideas and then many have non verifiable belief systems so for example they teach something that cannot be verified one fine morning the angel of the lord came to me in my bedroom and and woke me up and the, he gave me a scroll you cannot verify that claim it cannot be verified a spaceship came down god came down a alien came down i was taken into heaven so often their claims are cannot be verily verified non verifiable belief systems often the philosophy makes sense only if you adopt the full set of values and definition that it teaches so you cannot take one part of their teaching you have to adhere to every system every jot and tittle of the teaching then when you are when we are to speak about cultic moments the leader of a cult is very important 
he is often considered very charismatic and very special for various reasons because in every cultic movement their cult leader has been revered as someone who is who has received special revelations from god they are considered equal with biblical apostles and their written words and their books or pamphlets are considered equivalent to biblical literature that is bible he claims to be incarnation of deity angel a special messenger he claims to be appointed by god for a mission he claims to have special abilities he is claimed as someone who is often above reproach and is to be not to be denied or contradicted in a cultic movement a leader cannot be charged you cannot question him of his morality of his ethics of his personal life you cannot challenge a person he is above anyone else so if you see any of those elements in so called preachers of today they are cultic if a person is claiming to receive special messages from god and he claims he cannot he cannot be contradicted he cannot be questioned he is cultic because every person whether be a teacher or pastor he is subject to the word of god if he is make if he is criticized if he is criticized for his teaching he needs to evaluate himself he is he, he should allow himself to evaluate himself and if a wrong is found he should subject himself to be corrected so a cult denies that and their ethos fourth they often seek to do good works otherwise no one would join them so outwardly first of all that is their trap they often seek to do good works and to help the needy they are usually moral and possess a good standard of ethical teaching outwardly their ethical teaching seems good outwardly but the, when you get into that you are exposed to their unbiblical and false food many times the bible is used along with their literature particularly their teachings the particularly the teachings of the leader of the cultic movement whenever the bible is used it is always distorted with private interpretations misinterpretations every cult redefines jesus redefines jesus they redefine the historical biblical jesus every cult does that so there are variety of cults from ascetics to promiscuous cults from esoteric knowledge cults to very simple teaching cults to the rich cult rich and powerful cults and the poor and weak will cults so everyone is vulnerable so who is vulnerable to joining a cult who is vulnerable everyone is vulnerable the rich the poor the educated uneducated old and the young the irreligious atheistic everyone is vulnerable so what is the profile of a cult member first he is disenchanted with conventional religious establishment see every church has cheated you corrupted christianity everything is corrupt disenchanted with conventional religious establishments when christianity disenchanted with conventional words against church or denominations intellectually confused over philosophical religious issues what is right and wrong sometimes disenchanted the society as a whole whole christianity has gone corrupted no one is perfect and they always make a mockery of christianity altogether has a need for encouragement and suffer support emotionally needful needs a sense of purpose financially needy so these are the elements of a profile of a cult member how cults recruit 
people into their moments. They find a need and they fill it. They find a need and fill it. There are many ways cults employ to recruit people. Particularly, they target other Christians. If a cult is limited to Christianity, they will not go to people exposing other religions, particularly. They target other denominations, other local churches. The first is called love bombing, constant positive affection in word and deed. Lot of physical contact, hugging, touching, they lend emotional support, help in various ways, financially. That is called love bombing. So they feel somewhat secure and they come to a conclusion. In my local church, I am not entertained, I am not encouraged, I am not provided, but here they always they care for me so I can join them. They first compliment them, reassure them, and they then make themselves at the center of attention. And then, cults use the influence of Bible and mention Jesus as being one of their own, thereby adding validity to their system. They say that we only interpret the Bible truth, truthfully and Jesus is one of us. They twist the scripture, they use the Bible verses, always they use verses out of context. They mix their inter misinterpreted verses with their aberrant philosophy. They have their philosophy. Every moment, cultic moment, there's an agenda and a philosophy. Here they misinterpret Bible scriptures and they here one side they have their agenda and they mix that and they infuse their teachings. Then comes gradualism. First, love bombing, then they use Bible. And third, gradualism, slowly altering of thinking process and belief system through repeated teaching. In every, in a cultic movement, they, first they do not start with every denomination is corrupt. First they love bomb. And then they lightly, lightly use scriptures and gradualism. They alter the thinking process and belief system to repeated teaching. Again and again and again and again. So, I have dealt with cultic people and I have researched on them. And if someone is from Jehovah's Witnesses, they always, they were keen about speaking of Jesus as created one. If you witness a cultic person, they only always focus upon that center point. If a person is all accustomed to teach the book of Revelation unbiblically, then he always preaches from that book. Always misinterprets that. And he always says, no one is teaching this book, book of Revelation correctly, only I have received the revelation. New beliefs are reinforced by other cult members and people are made to accept those things. Why is someone joins in a cult? The cult is an attempt to satisfy various needs of people. They think that they are providing their various needs, psychological. So if a person has a weak personality, he can trap into that cult. Emotionally, someone has recently suffered an emotional trauma, so they take advantage of that. Intellectual. If a person has uh, plenty of questions and it remains unanswered, the cult attempts to say that, do you see your church, have they dealt, dealt with these things? This verse speaks like that, have your pastor ever preached from these things? Because the th truth is not as it was believed. The truth is entirely different. Come here, we will teach you the truth. So, cult is appealing to someone for some reason. It could be for moral rigidity, financial security, promises of exaltation, redemption, and so on. Then how are people kept in the cult? Dependence. People often want to say because the cults meet their psychological, intellectual, and spiritual needs. 
they make people to depend upon themselves. Then isolation. Outside contacts are reduced and more and more of the life of the member is built around the cult. Then it becomes very easy to control the shape, control and shape the member. They are made to depend upon the cultic organization. Then they are isolated from their family. If these things are happening to your relatives or your family members or your neighbors, they are in a cultic moment, whether it be small or large. If a moment is isolating a person from his spouse or his family, they are cultic if they claim to be a church or not. There are some so-called churches who claim that you should not spend your time with your wife, should not spend your time with your family, but you should spend all your time to God. How? By laboring for our denomination. That is cultic. It is isolation. Cognitive recognition or brainwashing. Once the person is indoctrinated, their thinking process are reconstructed to be consistent with the cult and to be submissive to this leader. Brainwashing. His thinking process are reconstructed to be consistent with the cult. He should not, once in his life, should think otherwise. If he thinks otherwise, he is doomed. He should not read any other books. He should not listen to any other sermons. He should not any other, any other, attend any other convention or he should not visit any other local church. He should not have fellowship with people of other denominations or other local churches. Their facilities, this facilitates the control by the cult leaders. Once the brainwashing happenings, then comes substance substitution the cult leaders often take the place of mother father priest teacher and healer he is isolated from his family and who takes the place the cult leader many unknowingly knowingly or unknowingly are having cult leaders as in place of their wife or father or mother or as spouse for example there are things which are to be discussed among family members for some things. But they, some people are not discussing anything with their family members. They always refer to a person who calls himself as an anointed person of God who have received some special revelation. Then he mails or visits that pastor or leader with a lump sum of money and asks, what is the will of God? Should I marry? Should I build this house? So, if he is his local church pastor or elder, his help is commended. But with regard to family matters, first, your family members, you have to discuss that with your family members. Cults, first isolate them, their members from their family members, and they take the place of their family members. Indebtedness. The member becomes indebted to the group emotionally, financially, etc. You are indebted to me. It is because of me you are now living. I, I many times I heard from some pastors say, if I have not prayed for you, you will not be here. Even if God had used that pastor, he should not speak that like, in a, like that manner. Some pastors are claiming that you should now be in a sepulchre. Your grave should have been erected by now. It is by because of my prayer you are now alive. So you should come to me and you should pay the tithes regularly. And if you leave from this church, you are doomed. Indebtedness. So they are believed to be indebted to their cultic moment. I am forever indebted to this moment. Without this pastor, I am nothing. How many times you have heard from people? They will not say, without the help of God, I am nothing. They will say, it is because of this pastor. That pastor might have prayed, but always the reverence and credit first go, should go to God. If that credit is taken over by another person, that is cultic. And guilt the person is told that to leave is to betray the leader, the God of the group. If you get out from our organization or out from our church, you are out 
of God's spear. You are doomed and threatened. Threat of destruction by God for turning from the truth. They claim we have the embodiment of truth and if you reject us, you are doomed. In some cultic moments, physical threat is also employed. Threat of missing the rapture, threat of judge on the judgment day. So, these are the elements, this is an outline of how cults should operate. And once again, when I am emphasizing the doctrinal, when it comes to the doctrinal aspects, I spoke from every doctrine how they misinterpret Christian teaching. Particularly, if you ask, foundational means, what are the very foundational elements that cults deny? The deity of Jesus. Every cult attacks the person of Jesus. Because in Christianity, why are we called Christians? We are the followers of Christ. We are the disciples of Christ. We are the ambassadors of Christ. Always, in Christianity, Christ takes the preeminence. So, every cult attempts to distort that because their cultic moment or their cultic leader wants to take that preeminence. So, they, ha they have to degrade Jesus. Every cultic moment, particularly, they deny that Jesus is fully God. Every cultic moment. Even, even if they say that Jesus is God, they refer to Jesus as God with a little g, G-O-D, little g, not large g. They always, this is the first element, first foundational thing they attack is, Jesus is God, the deity of Christ. The second thing is, salvation by grace through faith alone. It is recorded in many verses, Romans th chapter 3, 28, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Galatians 3 and 5. Because in the teaching of cults, they believe salvation comes through their moment. But Bible says, a pastor cannot save a person. A local church cannot save a person. It is only Christ, one and only Christ that can save a person. A local church or a pastor can lead that person to receive Christ, can show that path, but he cannot provide salvation. But cults teach that God has provided us the privilege that within only our moment, salvation is possible. And thirdly, they deny the physical resurrection of Christ. Physical resurrection of Christ. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus was risen up again in spirit. They deny the physical resurrection of Christ. If there is physical resurrection of Christ is denied, the present work of Christ is also denied, then the major cults deny the monotheistic belief, biblical monotheistic belief, and also cults deny Trinity. Every major cult distorts or denies that God eternally exists as in three persons as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And also, major cults always deny the virgin birth of Christ. Virgin birth of Christ. So, finally, to wrap up, what is our response to cultic teachings and practices? What is our response? First, we should allow life of Christ to be lived out in our behavior. How sh life should reflect Christ. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 and in verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live yet not tie but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me. 
So, this is our first assigned first and foremost assignment. Live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. No cultic leader would live by that. Because Christ is not preeminent in his life. It is his ethos, his pride and his demonic beliefs that overruled his life. Prioritize his belief and life, not Christ. So our lives should embark this truth. Second, preach Christ. Whenever possible, our theology and our mission is to focus the person and work of Christ, the past, the present and future work of Christ. If our theology is Christ-centered, it is easy for us to respond to cults. Love one another. So, our mission to rescue people from cultic moments it requires love. Christ had died for them and Christ had risen up for them. So, if they were going against the biblical case, they are doomed. So, we should be aware and we should love them so that we should love them from out of the, out from our, our heart. If he is remaining in that moment, he, first of all, he is not saved. A truly saved person cannot remain in that moment for so long. If a person continues to remain at that moment, it is a mark that he is not saved to begin with. And if he is continuing at that moment, he ends his life in that manner, he, is end, he will end up in hell. So, this, we, our love for them should motivate us. And we should also pray for those so involved. Lord, please open up their eyes. Help my ministry that they may be delivered from the snatches of devil. Always be ready to give defense of our faith. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. Always we should be ready. We should not procrastinate that. If a person asks, where in the Bible does say that Jesus is God? If we were scratching our heads for two minutes, our opportunity is gone. He will say, Jesus is not God. That is why you are not able to quote a Bible verse. So, there are plenty of Bible verses which say that Jesus is God. But if a person asks in the middle of the night, you should be able to reply to them and to exhort them. And we are called to content, correct, refute and admonish biblical truths. So we have to have a clear understanding of biblical doctrines and we should love God and we should love, we should try to follow Christ and out of that, we should, we should stood up against these cultic teachings in the coming weeks. Particularly, we shall expound upon the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses, its practice, its teachings, and our biblical response.